Uh, thank you, Alex. It's great to be here. And uh, we're honored to be a part of the inaugural summit. And congratulations on the great success. Uh, I'm actually a Denver boy, and Denver's one of my favorite places. Although I live in Santa Monica, which is a pretty good place also. Um, and Brett and I have been really good friends for 30 years and business partners for 15 years. We get so comfortable, we've actually started arguing on stage, which was a little embarrassing in some presentations. It may happen. May, may have, may have. Um, so we know you guys are just settling in, and you probably dropped off the kids, right? The emails are starting to come in. So we want to get you guys into a coherent uh, technique. And we actually want to get coherent, because we realize we're just starting to do uh, more public speaking again after two and a half years. We've sounded really good on Zoom for the last two and a half years, reading notes. Can anybody relate with that? And I actually started <laughs> believing our shit, right? And then it's like, OK. Uh, so Brett's going to lead us through something called heart-focused breathing. And it's really the base technique of a lot of the high-performance techniques we teach our clients. Great. So you all are commuting in from wherever you are, dropping kids off, going through all your emails, trying to silence your phones, tell your teams, don't bother me. So let's get ourselves centered. Alex mentioned presence and how important that is. So we're just gonna do about 60 seconds of heart-focused breathing. Abby talked about this yesterday. We're actually gonna do it today. So this is a technique you can do with your eyes open or closed. And I just want you to start to slow your breathing down. And just start to focus your attention in the area of your heart. If it helps to anchor your attention there, you can put your hand over your heart. You don't have to. And just imagine that your breath is flowing in and out of your heart or your chest area. Breathe a little slower and deeper than you normally do. So you're focusing on your heart, focusing on your breath. Breathe into your heart or chest area as if it's the only place your breath can go. Breathe from your heart or chest area as if it's the only place the breath can come from. Let's do that for a few more breaths. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. All right, does anyone feel calmer? More relaxed, more, more alert maybe? Maybe you felt nothing. Does anyone feel sleepy? Yes. <laughs> OK, thank you for your honesty. We're going to talk about that. Awesome. Thanks for letting us do that. All right. So we want to have some fun today in our short time together. We're also going to make it experiential and interactive. So today we're really focused on, uh, in, wait, oh. Right, we're, t we're focused on intelligent energy management and really how emotions drive our behavior, performance, physiology, and really how we see the world. And if you guys only have a few takeaways, we would love for you, we're gonna teach you about three techniques. And we'd love for you to try to incorporate them into your life over the next two weeks, right? Evidence is the best thing. And with these tools and techniques, our clients have found them to be the most effective for real time in the most stressful and challenging situations. Science is continually showing us how important it is to do these tools and techniques every day. And the third thing is science is showing us that if we do it for just five minutes a day, we can create significant transformation. I personally was introduced these teachings many years ago when I was actually living in Denver, friends with Eric Matisic here, and I was living in a state of fight or flight, and I was really being driven by anger, fear, and anxiety. And as my rock bottom moment, I went through a family tragedy, my mom took her life, and I hit rock bottom. And I had no idea how to self-regulate my emotions. I grew up in a very masculine environment as an athlete, Emotions were not a good thing. And so I, a friend of mine introduced me, a professional athlete who might be here, and um, I started to do these tools and techniques every day. And about two months in, I actually started to feel myself more present. 
I started to feel this thing called joy, and I probably experienced gratitude for the first time in my life. Yeah, and as Jeff mentioned, we've known each other a long time, so I witnessed this transformation. And as he was introduced to these tools and techniques after a family tragedy, for me, I had been practicing, still do, and teaching these techniques to our clients on an everyday basis. And this was all before uh, a life challenge. Um, earlier in the pandemic, our son, who is now 20, started to experience some significant mental health challenges. Like many kids his age, it's been a tough couple of years. And as parents, we just can't prepare for this sort of thing. There's nothing in the manual that says how to deal with when your child starts acting differently than they normally act. And as my wife was freaking out, um, she's an Italian from Boston, so she's quite emotional. I was really fortunate in that I had these tools and techniques already in my daily routine. And so I could navigate, even early on when it got really dark and we had to make some difficult decisions, I could navigate those waters feeling calm, feeling present, feeling really clear in the decisions that we had to make. And most importantly, I felt a deeper understanding and a sense of compassion for our son and what he was going through. And it also allowed me to have the necessary energy to be able to manage the business that we're building and to, to spend time you know, working with our clients you know, throughout the week. So um, we always like to share that. I appreciate you letting us give you a peek into our personal lives. Now let me just tell you a little bit about who the heck we are on a professional level. If I can get these slides to work, there we go. Okay, so um, Jeff and I are entrepreneurs like you. Um, we're founders of multiple companies, we're former competitive athletes, and we are recovering stressed out, burned out, living in fight or flight corporate executives. Can anyone relate? Yeah. And our own journeys really inspired us to start Paragon. And the work we do is focused on high performance, leadership development, resiliency training. We work with a number of amazing organizations around the world. This is our vanity slide up here. And we are seeing change happen every day. And we're, in, we're on the front lines working with people in you know, companies that are global, Fortune 500s. We're working with leading private companies, CEO communities like YPO and Vistage, military, law enforcement, Jeff mentioned athletes. Olympic and professional. Um, we're now working with major colleges and universities, helping staff and faculty navigate these difficult times. And we're really fortunate because there's no demographic that isn't relevant for what we do. And we're grateful because we want to touch millions of people over the next several years. We're, we're that passionate um, about the work that we're doing. Now, um, because we're inside a lot of these companies, we know that it has been a challenging couple of years. And we know you all feel the same. Um, some of you are probably working harder than you ever have, longer hours. There's less separation between your personal lives and your professional lives with dogs and kids coming in on Zoom meetings and board meetings, right? And there's been a lack of connection. We feel so grateful that we get to do this today in person, but this has not happened for many of us over the past couple of years. And this lack of human connection has created a lot of challenges for us. And I'm sure that many of you have been touched by mental health in some way over the last couple of years, whether it's a family member like with us, maybe a colleague or a peer, maybe you yourself have experienced some mental health challenges over the last couple of years. So that's why we're here. Yeah, thanks, Brett. And when we uh, talk to the healthcare experts that are part of the Paragon team, they really talk about this second pandemic in the form of a mental health crisis. And really because of this, we ask our clients and we ask ourselves, like, how do we move forward without just trying to survive every day? How do we connect with our passion, our purpose, and really connect with being the creators of our own world without constantly being influenced by the fear that's being projected upon us by the outside world? So this is why you're gonna hear us say this over and over. It's so important to have awareness of our emotional state and really tools and techniques that can help us shift into a more optimal state. Yeah, and a key focus of the teachings is about self-regulating your emotions, whether we're working with middle schoolers or SWAT team leaders, right? To truly create the type of change Jeff has talked about, we have to self-regulate our own emotional state. The individuals, teams, the organizations, some of which you see up here that are understanding this and doing this, they're operating at the highest level, right? Even in the most challenging of situations. 
This is why tier one military units, the Navy SEALs, the badasses of the badasses, right? They're learning these tools and techniques their first week of training. So I just wanna ask the group, how many of you have experienced feelings like anger and frustration, and you've noticed when these emotions come up how they impact the balance of your day? Thank you. We're human beings, which means we're emotional beings, right? So you heard a little bit about this yesterday. What's happening in your body is these emotions like anger and frustration, they're creating a stress response. And the body is then producing and releasing hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. And when we are exposed to stress on a daily basis, on a prolonged basis, on a long-term basis, these chemicals, these hormones, they beat us up. It's what leads to sickness and illness and disease and many other health challenges. We both experience this in our personal lives. Many of you probably have. Now the good news is when you practice the techniques we're gonna share with you today on a regular basis, you can reduce that stress response that's happening in your system, which is creating imbalance and it's having an effect on your blood pressure and your fluids and your digestion and your immune system. You can reduce that stress response, which for some folks lasts six to eight hours. We can reduce it down to just a few minutes. We're gonna show you how to do that today. So when we start to self-regulate our emotions, we create a chemical shift in the body. We start to understand our physiology more. We get into an optimal state. And then all of a sudden we can start to heal ourselves. We can rejuvenate ourselves and we can operate at the level that we want on a daily basis. Right. All right, so we can talk about this stuff all day long, <laughs> but we want you to have your own experience. So we're gonna do a little experiment with you. We want you to turn to the person next to you, and if you guys are odd numbers, maybe somebody could jump to another table, or you can do this with three people. And we would love for you to share, one, what's a recurring situation or issue that's stressful for you throughout the day? Could be deadlines, action list that never ends, aging parents, it could be mental health within your family. The second thing is how do you feel about this issue? What emotions are being created? Overwhelm, fear, sadness. And the third is how do you currently handle the situation? Do you get angry? Do you shut down? Are there addictions? Do you work harder? That's the one I do. So with this one, um, obviously you're gonna share some personal stuff. So one is you don't have to share with the person next to you if it's private. Or two, just share how do you feel about this issue and how do you currently handle the situation. So Brett, will you mirror this? Sure. All right, so what's a recurring situation or issue that might be recurring in your life? Yeah, I mentioned the situation with our son, but it's for me more about my wife's reaction and how she handles um, the the day-to-day -day kind of roller coaster ride that we're experiencing. Yeah. Great. Uh, and how do you feel about what emotions get created? Well, certainly I worry and I have concern about her own stress levels. It also brings about some frustration, yeah. sometimes a little impatience. And how do you currently handle the situation? Sometimes not very well. I like yeah. to put my coach hat on and try oh. to find a solution. Oh, how, did, for how does that work? It. Yeah, she loves that, it. She loves you guys, it. Yeah. Do you guys like being coached? Yeah. The, the, yeah. The husbands out there can relate. Okay. Um, but sometimes I literally I'll take the dog and just go outside and go for a walk. Right? I'll just remove myself from the environment, get some air, take a breath, hopefully come back and create a more <laughs> optimal state. Uh, this, this is someone from your past. Yeah, is, this this is why it's very coherent. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to give you guys about four minutes and about two minutes each, and then we'll have you switch, and then we want you sharing your deepest, darkest secrets. No, no, it's a safe space. Okay, so turn to the person next to you, and then we'll let you know when to change partners. Awesome.
Okay, about one more minute. One more minute. There he is. Okay, I'm gonna hit the gong. I've always wanted to do this. I feel like we're in Mr. Is, Miyagi's uh, Does anybody uh, need more here. time? Okay. All right. You guys need one? Okay. One minute. All right, okay. 30 more seconds. Sorry. That they, had a th they had an odd number. Okay. Jody. <laughs> okay. Deepest, darkest secret, please. Let's bring the vulnerability. No, I'm kidding. We'll we'll pick on Alex here. Cool. Good? Thank you, guys. All right, thank you. All right. We'd love for sh some sharing. Maybe just one person. Alex is our leader. We love uh, maybe a recurring we'll situation or I, issue. There we go. Well, as a fairly pertinent example, putting together an event like this and having it take, you know, spending about six or nine months planning it and doing it, uh, did have a number of stress coming up for me. Yeah, and uh, uh, what emotions were being created? The primary emotion was terror. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Uh, yeah. Of, is this a thing? Do, does anybody care? Or is anyone going to show up? Are the speakers going to be here? Am I going to, you know, am I going to make money? Am I going to break even? Am I not going to make money? What's that all yeah. about? And how'd those you, recurring thoughts and um, associated emotions. And how how did you uh, handle that situation? <sighs> well, <laughs> the time there were times when I caught myself in the emotion and did the things which I've learned, be it typically breathing or meditation or just kind of awareness. That being said, nine times out of 10, I did not catch myself in it. Right. So I just mm -hmm. handled it by going further down the rabbit hole and doing other things. Yeah, great. Great, thank you, Alex. Great share, Alex, thank you. All right, so we want you to feel in your bodies and some of you might have re-experienced the stress by just going back to the memory, right? And um, the reason for this is the brain does not know the difference between the actual experience and the memory of going back to it. And so the memory can create an emotional response. So how many thoughts do you think we have a day? Abby, you can't answer this. Our master neuroscientist. Patty, what do you think? How many thoughts a day? No. <laughs> Oh, you did, okay. Yeah. Feels like, how many, how many thoughts, Abby? Nice, and how many thoughts are the same from the day before? Somebody at this table. Yeah. What'd you say? 90%. Nice. Very good. Very nice. Well done. So if you think about it, if we're having the same thoughts every day, and about 95% of our brain activity is run by the unconscious, right? Our operating system, and so when we're unconscious, we're basically making the same decisions, choices, having the same behavior, and then having the same experiences every day. And then if we're having the same experiences every day, then we're creating the same emotions every day. So basically what we're doing is we're recreating the same day every day, or we're really creating the past each day. And so that's why it's so important to have awareness of our emotions and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but again, we're, we're gonna talk about these tools and techniques and how important they are to be able to shift that state. All right. 
Jeff has now stressed you out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring you back. Let's do 30 seconds of heart focused breathing. So go ahead and close your eyes again. And just focus your attention in the area of your heart. And just imagine that your breath is flowing really gently in and out of your heart or your chest area. Breathe a little slower and deeper than you normally do. If it's comfortable, count to five on your inhales, breathing into your heart or chest area. Count to five on your exhale, breathing from your heart or chest area. Okay. Now that we've paused your physiological response, right? Remember that overflow of chemicals when you're experiencing stress? Let's add to this experience. So we're gonna do a technique called quick coherence and we're gonna activate your inner superpowers. Or as we like to say when we're working with kids, we're gonna have you make a wish to your inner genie. We're gonna have you take the emotions you were feeling from that stressful situation, frustration, anger, terror, and we're gonna have you replace it with something that makes you feel good. Okay, so we're gonna combine heart-focused breathing, what we just did, with the activation of this positive renewing emotion. So I want you to connect with a memory that's easily accessible, something that provides this positive renewing feeling. This could be a, a great vacation, it could be a pet, it could be a life event like a wedding or a graduation or the birth of a child, or maybe it's just a special place in nature that you have that you like to go. So Jeff, do you want to model this? What's a easily accessible, positive emotion that you can connect to for this exercise? Uh, for me, it's always pets, uh, specifically a 150 pound Rhodesian Ridgeback named Rocky, who's pure love and gratitude. And I love my family, friends, business partners, but I don't always like them. So Rocky, <laughs> I can really access it. I can feel it. He's a lovable creature. Okay, now as you're accessing this memory, See if your senses get heightened. So if this was a beach vacation that you're tapping into, see if you can recall the smell of the ocean, the sound of the waves, the feeling of the sand between your toes, okay? So go ahead and close your eyes, and we're gonna do the heart-focused breathing. I'm then gonna ask you to activate this positive renewing emotion. So focus your attention in the area of your heart, and imagine that your breath is flowing in and out of your heart, or chest area. Breathe a little slower and deeper than you normally do. This time see if you can notice the subtlety of your heartbeat or your pulse. And on your inhales, breathe into your heart or chest area as if it's the only place your breath can go. And on your exhales, breathe from your heart or chest area as if it's the only place the breath can come from. Now as you breathe in and out of your heart, make a sincere attempt to activate this positive, renewing feeling. This could be emotion, an emotion of joy or gratitude, care, appreciation or love for someone or something in your life. Just commit to sustaining this feeling throughout your entire body. Try to increase the feeling from this elevated emotion just a little bit more with each breath as if you're surrounding your entire body with this renewing energy. Let's take a couple more conscious deep breaths, breathing through the heart. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Who feels more renewed? Great. Who felt nothing, maybe more tired or uncomfortable? Great, an evolved group, because <laughs> when I did it, I felt uncomfortable. And the reason you might feel uncomfortable is because the nervous system and the stress we feel every day starts to become habitual and familiar. And when you start to get into this more relaxed state, it actually feels foreign to the brain, the brain, and the brain <laughs> prefers what's familiar versus what's optimal. 
For those of you who might have felt a little tired, it's because you're actually feeling into your body in a deeper way for the first time. So when you turn that adrenaline off, you actually start to feel how tired and sleep deprived you really are. So again, these tools and techniques help you shift, right, from this more st the stress response into a more optimal state. And one research study we always like to share specific to quick coherence is our partners at HeartMath worked with veterans who had severe PTSD, and they were in therapy for a few years and really not making many changes. So they had the veterans do quick coherence, what we just did, for six to nine weeks for just five minutes a day. And after the six to nine weeks, they literally changed their baseline, which we'll talk a, a little bit about later. And also when they did brain scans before and after, their amygdala, who knows what the amygdala is? Okay, good, it's a, an evolved group. Um, you know, and a lot of people refer to it as the fear center. Their amygdala actually shrank and they had gray matter grow in their frontal cortex, which a lot of people think is the smart thinking part of the brain. That's how powerful it is. Five minutes a day for six to nine weeks. So we always like to share how you can put this into practice, right? We don't want you to just learn it today and then I don't remember what those guys were talking about. Yes. Let's tell them about how we can actually put it into use. Yeah, so Brett and I were in the corporate world for a long time and we would hear these great speakers, feel inspired, and we didn't remember a damn thing the next day. And so here are some just simple things. We, again, we just want you to incorporate it. Just try it for the next few weeks. And heart-focused breathing, quick coherence, and then we're gonna teach you uh, prep technique at the end. Um, we want you to, these are the three that we'd love for you to incorporate. And as a prep technique, it's great before calls, meetings, difficult conversations. We, we use these tools and techniques with our professional athlete clients before a big sporting event, uh, with our entrepreneurs before they're going out raising money, I'm sure a lot of you can relate, and with our Fortune 500 executives before big board meetings. And what's great is the way the brain does not know an actual experience versus a memory, that's true forward facing also. So if you have a big event and you can visualize it, but more importantly, feel the emotions to it, when you're actually then in that future facing event, you, you're recreating it and you can actually get into flow state a lot easier because it feels familiar. Also for us and our clients, it's been the most powerful shift and reset during a stressful situation or after a stressful situation. And Brett talked about these tools and techniques, there's tons of science on it. Our, the stress response gets reduced from six to eight hours to just a few minutes. I mean, that's huge, right? And we'll talk a little bit later about it, but when we work with SWAT teams, uh, military, police officers, they're living in a hyper-vigilant state, and so their bodies are getting torn up, eventually leading to disease, depression, and a lot of other challenges. And when they can reduce that stress response from six to eight hours to a few minutes, it literally saves their lives. And then the third thing is really sustaining. So we recommend with our clients that they do five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes at night, and we have seen transformational shifts with this. So Brett, how do you use it as a prep technique? I use it for experiences like this today. So visualizing us being up here on stage and experiencing the emotions that I actually desire, being present, being calm, communicating clearly, hopefully, mm -hmm. and having some fun. Right, Abby talked a little bit about this yesterday. Awesome, and how about as a shift and reset? Well, for those of you who have teenagers, they're always angling for more money. So anytime one of my <laughs> children comes to me and wants their credit card limit increased and it triggers a, you know, an issue for me, I try to shift myself in the moment rather than just react and say something I might regret. I'll use the technique just to kind of slow the jets a little bit. Awesome, okay, so now we want you to turn to the person, the other person, and we're just gonna do two minutes of sharing. One is talk about maybe something important this week or next week where you can use these tools, these techniques to start to prep for an event. And the second thing is, what's a recurring stressful situation that you might be anticipating this week or next week? And then again, talk about how you can use these tools and techniques.
So we'll give you two to three minutes, and then we'll bring you back. My name is Rich Malpas, and I am uh, making an offer um, on a business in Texas this week. And as I was mentioning, it can go either one of two ways. One more head-oriented, uh, because there's a lot of competition. It's more about money, more about fear. Or it can go more about the relationship with that founder, and I can stay consistent. So it's important for me to stay grounded over these next couple of weeks at the risk of losing the opportunity because I'm not gonna compromise and let my head lead this endeavor and I need to stay heart-led even at the risk of losing what could be, I feel like a great long-term opportunity for me. Yeah. Beautiful, thank you for sharing. Thank you, appreciate it. Awesome, all right, how about, uh, what about somebody at this table? Yeah, it could be a prep or shift and reset. Right. <laughs> so we had some conversations around um, children, um, a couple of us, uh, where, where our kids are in their life, frequent run-ins and stressful situations around that. For me, I'm particularly thinking of my second born. Not only do we have normal parenting, but we seem to have a personality 
conflict that pretty consistently clashes uh, with each other. So, and one of the things that was, so as far as prep and reset, taking just 10 seconds, 10, 10 seconds when an issue is arising that I do have to deal with as a parent, but it's so tempting to feel righteous and justified and dealing with it in an angry way, yeah. or even feeling like this is the only way it's gonna motivate him is for me to just really raise the temperature. So pulling away from that, reflecting on that, and really understanding what's gonna best serve him in that moment. Beautiful. Thank, thank you, Brian. Righteous and when, justified, that's great. When you guys come back next year to hear us, we're actually gonna talk about when you get into this state of coherence, other people around us start to match that coherence. And we've done this you know, with Stanford. I mean, there's been a lot of things. So I just would say, like, when you're in your meeting, when you're with your children, do the heart-focused breathing and stay present and see how you can start to shift the environment. It is wild. So thank you. Okay, awesome, great. Hopefully you're getting some value out of the sharing exercises. We are gonna talk a little bit about the science and research. We're gonna cram about four decades of it into about three minutes. So bear with us, but I don't wanna get gonged off the stage as Alex uh, warned. All right, so we've had you go through the physiological shift. We've had you go through a few techniques. Hopefully you felt the shift in your body. Now we're gonna talk about this concept of being in an optimal state, right? And what Jeff and I love about what we're teaching you today and what we do every day with our clients is it's all rooted in science and research. We didn't just Google this yesterday. These are some of the research and publishing partners, the credibility slide, as we like to say. And what's awesome about these organizations is not only have they been involved in decades worth of research, but their executives, their leaders, their staff, their doctors, their nurses, they're being trained in these techniques that you're learning today. So they are practicing shifting into this state of coherence on a regular basis. Oh, we missed a slide in there. Okay, let's talk about what coherence is. This is HeartMath's definition of coherence, an optimal state in which the heart, mind, and emotions are aligned and in sync. Physiologically, it's where the nervous, hormonal, and immune systems are functioning in a state of coordination. When we are experiencing stress, we get off balance. It's a bodily experience. It then leads to activity in the brain, right? We like to think of coherence as your opti optimal operational state. It's like flow. Many of you have probably read the book. An athlete might say they're, they feel like they're in the zone. And when I was a young executive, Jeff and I talk about this all the time, when we were younger, we used to wake up in the morning, feel stressed, anxious, worried, fearful, and think, okay, this is what we gotta deal with today, right? You just gotta suck it up. But the science shows that you can proactively shift yourself into this state of flow. You can put yourself in the zone by proactively doing these techniques on a daily basis. And when we learn to create this sense of balance in our system, this is when we show up at our best. This is when we feel that love for life that Jeff mentioned earlier, that we can really take on anything, right? The, the acquisition process you're going through, right? You'll be grounded, you'll be present if you do these techniques on a regular basis. So Jeff, you mentioned how the brain works, whether it's the past or the future. We talked about what coherence is all about when we get into this state of flow. Now let's talk about how coherence actually helps change the baseline. Yeah, so this is some gold right here. Um, so we talked about the baseline, but let's talk about what a baseline is. Baselines are formed uh, from often experienced emotions and when they get ingrained within the brain's neural pathways. So basically, these often experienced emotions, right, if it's feeling stressed with a child, if it's worrying about money, right, when you're younger, they start to become unconscious and automatic response patterns, right? And again, when we're unconscious, then we're making the same choices, we have the same behaviors, and we're interacting with the world the same way every day. So Brett, what, uh, maybe what's a baseline that's been formed over the last few years or even when, since, since you were a kid? So I grew up in a house where the topic of money was always a challenging one. I grew up with parents who always had um, fear around money and this sense of lack. So anytime money situations come up, and this is something that I've worked hard on the last many years, every now and then that, that sense of fear or feeling of lack tends to creep in. Yeah, I can relate with that. So the good news is we can rewire the brain, and the brain is much more adaptable than we think. 
And science is actually showing us by activating and sustaining heart coherence. So what we just did with heart-focused breathing or quick coherence. So science is showing us by activating and renewing the heart coherence, we can actually reset our nervous system. And this establishes a new baseline that allows for us to get into coherence or in a more optimal state, especially during the most challenging and difficult situations of our lives. And this is really what resilience is, right? Resilience has been a buzzword the last three, word, uh, last three years. But it, the more we get into coherent and that's how our body responds, we're just more resilient. Yeah, we're gonna keep moving through this because I know we've got a tight schedule to keep, but we're here to talk about how energy factors into all this because we all wanna wake up in the morning with a full tank. And we know that as we go on throughout the day, that tank starts to slowly drain and eventually we feel that place of burnout and overwhelm. So maybe we should just talk about emotions and how emotions yeah. actually play a part in so, our energy system. Absolutely. Um, so one of our colleagues who works with um, a lot of, like does a lot of programs with Navy SEALs, he always talks about it doesn't matter how smart you are, how prepared, how gifted. If you don't understand intelligent energy management, how to manage our energy, you can't show up in an optimal way. And I know does this sounds obvious, but so many of us are living in the past or the future, and we're cut off from the neck down. I think you said that yesterday, Abby. So as we talk about this path to self-mastery, this path to self-awareness, the first piece is to have awareness of our emotions, and then the second piece is to have tools and techniques to shift into a more optimal state. And the way we talk about emotions, they either deplete us, they're neutral, or they renew us. So with depleting emotions, we've all experienced anger, right? That explosion. But these more subtle emotions that run behind the scenes, like boredom, frustration, irritation, actually add up to bigger energy drains at the end of the day. So like the anger is like when you floor the gas in your car, right? You burn a lot of energy. But these subtle emotions that run behind the scenes, it's like when you park your car, turn it off, but you leave your lights on. Slowly drains your internal battery. And science continually shows when we have chaotic um, heart signals being sent to the brain, it affects key brain centers, again, like the amygdala, the thalamus, and the frontal cortex. Also, when we work with military, SWAT teams, professional athletes, when they're experiencing depleting emotions, their coordination's impaired, and their reaction time slows down. And again, long term, when we're experiencing depleting emotions, it creates disease, depression, and other health challenges. So if nothing else, we're gonna scare you into coherence. <laughs> There's some good news. If, so about 95% or something of, of uh, the disease that gets created is from stress. Like it's some crazy number. I don't know if it's exactly that number. And so if we can make ourselves sick, we can also heal ourselves. And um, we are the world's best pharmacy. And so when we experience a renewing emotion, it creates 1,400 biochemicals in our system, including, have you guys heard of DHEA, which is the vitality hormone? It's actually banned, like the synthetic version's banned for Olympic and professional athletes. And DHEA and these other hormones actually revitalize and rebuild the body. And we have seen amazing stories um, around that. One of the keys is it's more than just thinking this positive thought. You actually have to feel this, right? You have to create these emotions to get the full effect. I know for me, it took me forever to even experience a renewing emotion. Again, emotions were a bad thing. And when we work with military police officers and they're living in this hypervigilant state, they, they can't create a renewing emotion. So if we can bring them from a depleting emotion to neutral, or if we can have them connect with honor, courage, something beyond themselves, it really starts to shift the biochemicals in a more positive way. Okay, I'm not gonna go into this in depth, but this is what coherence actually looks like on paper. When uh, a research study monitored one person who was experiencing depleting emotions, and on the left, what you see is their heart rate readout some might say it looks chaotic or erratic. On the right, 
they then were experiencing the renewing emotions. So they did the exercise you all just did. This is actually one graph. We split it up for the purpose of the display. But this is what it looks like on paper. We're, hap we're going to hang around after. If those of you want to go deeper into how this works related to heart rate variability, I actually have a device with me that measures it. So we could, we could even run a, uh, a demo for you. OK. Has anyone read Man's Search for Meaning? Viktor Frankl? Yes. Yeah. Awesome book, right? This is one of our favorite quotes. And we refer to, uh, he refers to it as the space, right, between the stimulus and the response. And in that space is our power and our, uh, in our power to choose our response. And it's in that response that's where our growth and our freedom lies, right? So that experience with your child where you feel like you want to be righteous and justified, can you actually pause, right, and have a more optimal outcome from the engagement? Um, we call this a choice point. And we bring it up because, as Jeff talked about with emotions, we have this roller coaster experience of life throughout the day as business leaders, business owners, where we have to make a lot of decisions. And we just want you to notice as you go on about your day and your week and all the encounters you have, notice the choice points. Notice where you can pause and have the power to choose how you want to respond in the moment. It's quite powerful, and we always like to highlight it. So this is actually a micro example, Jeff. I know we're tight on time, but maybe we can just yeah. take them through See, the, the SWAT just leaders. Shut up. Um, so yeah, I'll give you the cliff note. So basically, this was SWAT team up in Northern California. Uh, before they got trained in these techniques, they had an elevated heart rate from two hours up to eight hours after they did the simulation. When they got trained in the technique after four weeks, six to eight hours went to a few minutes. And the reason this is relevant is our bodies don't know the difference in the corporate world also, right? So if you get an angry email, irritation from a client or a colleague, our bodies are reacting the same way. And if we don't have tools and techniques to shift into it, we're beating up our bodies and we're not optimizing key brain centers for us to be creative, intuitive, and all these other gifts that it takes to be success, uh, successful. And we can either be in a state of creativity or a state of survival. Okay, so one more breakout here. How are we doing on time? We have time? Okay, so we'd love to, for you guys to do a, a share with the entire table. And uh, what are your commitments to creating more coherence in your life? And it can be on a personal individual. It can be from a family standpoint or a professional standpoint. So we'd love for, for each person to share uh, around the table. And just pick one of them and maybe just give the tweet version. Yes, yes, that. So, especially this table over here. All right, how much time do we have? Four minutes? What's that? Oh my God. You, you might, okay, we'll do three you don't more have to techniques do this. then, okay. You, you can, yeah, yeah, actually we'll do this and then we'll do one more prep technique. technique, okay. Perfect. All right, we'll shut up now.
Okay, do we need more time? Are you guys good here? Okay, great. Good in the back? Salzy, you need more time? You Jeff guys Salzy need more time, Salzy? Yes. You're good? Okay. <laughs> you guys need, okay. Yeah, okay. All right, should we do a little sharing? They need more time? They need one more minute. One more minute. Alex is looking at his watch. We just got, he's never given us more time, so this is a blessing. All right, let's, let's hear a couple examples, Jeff. Did you want to pick someone over uh, here to the right, maybe right. in the back there? Well, did you guys share? Somebody here? One of you guys share, maybe? Okay. Okay. Bring the mic to them. Thanks. Um, I think uh, in terms of commitment, I, I really like the idea of, of applying it morning, you know, starting out the day right, uh, sometime throughout the day in the middle of the day and then towards the end of the day to, to recenter again yeah. um, and just see the effect over the long run. So it's more of a ritual for you to actually incorporate yeah. it into the yeah, flow I, of your day. I've heard of the, the breathing techniques before uh, and I think we've all kind of practiced those. Yeah. Uh, what I haven't done is try to connect a memory that evokes an emotion. Awesome. So that's, that'll be neat. All right, let's go over here. This is our business partner. He, you said it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. I'll come over here. Does anyone you, at this table want to share? Jice, do you feel comfortable sharing? Okay. Uh, so I, I, I apologize. I missed part of the coherence conversation, but my commitment is um, to my family more. I am a single mom. I do a lot of working, and my children have been calling me to the carpet lately about my lack of quality time that I've been spending with them. So when your four-year-old calls you out, you've got to rethink your priorities. <laughs> That's my commitment. They tend to do that, children, don't they? Uh, and as we talk about coherence, the Heart Math Institute talks about there's only a few ways to actually get into coherence. One is the heart-focused breathing, and as you change the rhythms of the heart. And then the second one is experiencing a positive, renewing emotion, and that put them on the map. Meditation's great, but it doesn't always mean you're getting into coherence or even these breathing exercises. Okay, we promised one more technique. So let's go back to a situation that's coming up for you. It could be this, you know, uh, this gentleman, Rich, acknowledged the uh, potential acquisition of a company. Think about one situation that's coming up in the next week where you can use this technique to your benefit to put yourself into an optimal state. And we're going to do this prep technique together. We love this. As Jeff mentioned, we do this often with our clients. So go ahead and identify a situation in your life. We're then going to go in and do the heart-focused breathing again. And then I'm going to ask you to imagine yourself, to visualize yourself in this situation. Could be flipping up the laptop, going on to a Zoom meeting. It could actually be walking into a meeting. Maybe it's a conversation you need to have with someone that's going to make you feel maybe a little emotionally off balance. And we're going to want you to anchor in the feelings that you desire for this experience, whether it's confidence, calm, presence, relaxed, appreciated. Okay. So everyone close their eyes, we'll do one closing technique here, and just focus your attention in the area of your heart. Just start to take some smooth, slow, easy breaths, breathing in and out of your heart, as if that's the only place your breath can go. Just imagine your breath flowing through your heart or chest area, really gently. Now visualize yourself in this upcoming situation. See yourself in this upcoming interaction. And imagine yourself feeling the emotions you desire, calm, present, relaxed. And just anchor those feelings in as you breathe through your heart. And if at any point during this experience you sense yourself getting off balance emotionally, just recenter right in the heart. And the genuine feeling just 
see yourself being balanced in this upcoming experience. Just take a few more conscious deep breaths, inhaling into your heart as if it's the only place your breath can go. Exhaling from your heart as if it's the only place your breath can come from. And just breathe a little appreciation to yourself for taking time to create this state of balance, calm, stillness in your body. And know that this can be your natural state of being at any time and at all times. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So just take notice of your body right now. Just feel into it and just feel this deeper level of relaxation, calm, coherence, and know this is a more optimal state that you can operate in throughout the day. Your body, your mind, it's all being optimized. So thank you very much uh, for allowing us to present. Um, we will send out, we'll, we'll send uh, Alex the presentation and for anybody that wants, we can send some recordings and also uh, just high level how you can integrate this into your life. So thank you very much. Appreciate your presence today.